Many people know who watch this channel and I am so grateful that you all join me on such a regular basis. It's all about sharing with you, you know, both sides of the story. I bring you what I know. And then, you know, you do find fascinating things out in the comments below because either someone's either worked with them, worked on that particular event, or indeed just simply has some kind of connection. That's what I love about, you know, starting this channel. It's about connecting, uh, finding out new information, and more importantly, the friendship that we have between us both. It is nice and really, uh, no, I've forgotten, haven't I? You're gonna, you, I know you're going to tell me off. We'll have a wave. <laughs> it's still bad weather over here in the United Kingdom. And, uh, you know, welcome to autumn. And, uh, you know, you know what I was saying to you the other day, though, about not having the uh, need, you know, to cart around like the coat and the scarf and the bag. You just dread it, don't you? I know yeah, a lot of you agreed with me. You do. Yes. Some of you don't mind. Well, you see, this is it. I just think it's more things to worry about. Do you leave it on the bus or, you know, in the shop when you take your coat? You know what it's like. Always tricky. Yes. Back as ever, though, the break and roll story of the day. This could be described as something about the Harlem Shuffle. Uh, this is because, of course, as we know recently, it's been revealed, and as ever, we have to say allegedly, even though it's in print around the world, that Harry and Meghan did request certain stipulations upon their visit to that Harlem school way back in 2021. This was because, you know, Meghan apparently wanted to look a certain way, uh, cushions, colorings, all sorts of stuff. I've seen it, as I say, many times before in my job, you get to work with these people and they're absolutely, you know, I don't mind sharing this with you, more bother than they're worth. Because you come away thinking, why did anybody think this was a good idea? But the problem that you have with a situation like that is you've gone so far down the track. If you remember, Harry and Meghan were going to be, um, he was going to be sitting in the audience, knowing his place, and she was going to be reading elements of her bench book, you know, and a few copies left behind as crumbs for the other people, all a while allegedly asking for donations for Archwell. Strange stuff. What's interesting now is as that backlash has really increased and created absolutely mega momentous problems for Harry and Meghan over in the United States PR wise, well, apparently we're all going to be corrected. Yes, we're going to be, yes, all standing and correct. It's going to be different because apparently, according to a very well-placed source, that particular school is appalled at the way that this has been turned around. We put a call into the school. Nobody wishes to talk about that said event. Long time in the past, but apparently Harry and Meghan's team are going to be presenting all those wonderful wishes and thank yous and cards and everything from alleged children that they read to and indeed connected with. Now, this is going to be interesting, isn't it? Because as I often say here on the show, it's about impartiality. Now, that particular information was gathered via a freedom of information request by a tabloid newspaper over here in the United Kingdom. So you can understand how that was, you know, that, that was sourced out. We already knew about that, though. I certainly knew about that particular story long before the Freedom of Information Act, because I know how these things work. The banning of certain newspapers that weren't allowed to attend. So what's going to be interesting now is the Harlem School, as I say, could be then reinvigorated, forced to reveal exactly what they thought, and in fact reveal what happened on said day. This is imperative if they want to draw a line under such negative PR for Harry and Meghan moving forward. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now that a lot of people, as I've said to you before, are free from working for them, they don't care about the NDAs, many people are unemployed, it's a cost of living crisis, money talks and people are willing to reveal even more. Desperate times, desperate measures, a developing story, Neil Sean in the very heart of the United Kingdom.